You're listening to Eerie Star UK Media Podcast. Voice of Eritrea's fourth front. And now for regional, local, and national news. Weekly briefing. You are listening to Eerie Star UK Media Podcast. Voice of Eritrea's fourth front. Deadlines from the High Level Task Force on COVID 19 in its statement of 16th of May last month. The high-level task force on COVID-19 announced that the GO has decided for the launching of random and extensive testing to gauge the spread of COVID-19 in the country in a comprehensive and more reliable man. In accordance with this guideline, the first phase of extensive random testing in various sections of Asmara was completed yesterday, June 2, 2020. The modalities of random sampling and testing were conducted jointly by the College of Medicine and Health Sciences and the National Laboratory. The random sampling and testing carried out fulfilled the standard criterion in terms of size of representative sample, urban density, demographic composition, gender, and other determinant variables. The tests covered 4,659 households, with one representative of the household undergoing the actual nasal and throat swab tests. The final result of the tests is the following. 4,658 of all tested individuals have been confirmed negative while one woman was diagnosed positive for COVID-19. Subsequently, all immediate and indirect contacts of the patient, 13 individuals in total, were promptly traced and put in quarantine in accordance with established norms and practices. One of those quarantined is her husband and he was later diagnosed positive for COVID-19. The overall result of the extensive and random tests conducted is encouraging. It corroborates the validity of the timely and comprehensive preventive measures that the GO has pursued from the outset. Nonetheless, we must recognize that the fight against COVID-19 is still at its early phase, for the following reasons. Although the random tests carried out are extensive in scope, they have been limited to SMARA only. As indicated in our previous statement, these tests will be conducted in border towns and villages, as well as in other places, in the coming weeks. In the long term, the tests will be ramped up for much wider coverage. Although flights to and from Eritrea have been stopped since the outbreak of COVID-19, travel to the country through land and sea routes continue unabated. As it happens, 5,270 individuals were put in quarantine in 81 centers established throughout the country in the past months. 3,477 of these were released subsequently after due processes while 1793 individuals still remain in quarantine in 45 centers. It is evident that this influx will continue even as necessary border control measures are taken. Globally, the spread of the pandemic continues to grow at an alarming rate. The rate of contagion is also growing daily in our region. For all these considerations, we cannot relax our vigilance. The fight against the pandemic must continue relentlessly and with the requisite vigor. And until the necessary comprehensive review and appraisal is finalized, the guidelines in force for the last two months will be eased incrementally. In conclusion, the high-level task force on COVID-19 urges all citizens to maintain the commendable commitment and adherence to the guidelines that they have shown to date in the fight against the pandemic in the period ahead, and to rectify few breaches that have occurred intermittently, especially in marketplaces and at social occasion, burials, mourning, weddings, and at places of worship. The high-level task force expresses its profound gratitude to all institutions who continue to work with full commitment to ensure success in the heavy task at hand and to all citizens who are extending financial and in-kind contributions as well as other assistance to those in need in the fight to vanquish this pandemic. More contribution to bolster National Fund. Asmara, June 10, 2020 According to the daily report from the Ministry of Health, members of the PFDJ Cultural Affairs contributed 130,247 NACFA to bolster the National Fund to combat the spread of coronavirus. Employees of the Ministry of Labor and Social Welfare Branch in the Southern Region 62,194 NACFA. Teachers of Dembe Sembel School 42,917 Nakfa, owner of Minafi Hotel 20,000 Nakfa, Adel Dairy and Poultry Farm 20,000 Nakfa, Development Committee of Adi Tekelzon 20,000 Nakfa and Temajila Administrative Area 17,000 Nakfa. Similarly, small businesses in Karen City and Administrative Areas in Ansaber Region contributed a total of 82,794 Nakfa while small businesses, Cooperative associations and individuals in the central region contributed a total of 33,886 NAKF. In related news, Eritrean nationals in Dubai contributed additional 25,759 dirham. A number of nationals residing inside the country and abroad have decided that the families renting their houses in various parts of the country to live free of rental payment ranging from one to seven months. The residents of Sanafa and Afabet subzone have also extended financial and food items support to disadvantaged families in their areas. 
In the same vein, the Eritrean National War Disabled Veterans Association, INVA, extended medical equipment and reference books to the Ministry of Health. According to Mr. Mohamed Nua Idris, head of organization and information of the association, the medical equipment was donated to the association by the Stuttgart Branch Association. Additionally, contribution by nationals to contain the spread of COVID-19 pandemic is continuing. According to the Ministry of Health, employees of Mindefera Subzone contributed 84,555 Nakfa, employees of Maritime Service Corporation 42,671 Nakfa, Yuri Telasa Branch 10,817 Nakfa, Aman Hakim Cement Product Enterprise in Yacht 10,000 Nakfa, and other small businesses and cooperative associations in Gash Barka and Central Regions contributed a total of 25,000 Nakfa. According to the Eritrea's Consul General in Toronto, nationals in Canada have made additional contribution of 125,000 Canadian dollars towards augmenting the national fund to fight COVID-19 pandemic. Similarly, traders in my mind semi-urban center contributed 14,674 Nakfa, and administrative areas and small businesses in my mind subzone contributed a total of 28,353 Nakfa. Cooperative associations and small businesses in the central region also contributed a total of 36,500 Nakfa. In related news, nationals inside the country and abroad decided that the families renting their houses to live free of charge ranging from two to six months. Furthermore, report from the Ministry of Health, Eritrean nationals inside the country and abroad contributed about 600,000 Nakfa and over $16,000 to the effort to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Accordingly, their private company contributed 364,356 Nakfa, Kalilai Mining Company 46,570 Nakfa, Alpha Mining Company $3,000, Andiamo Mining Company $3,000, Eritrean Embassy in Washington $10,000. European Union Office in Eritrea 29,000 Nakfa and Gash Bark Administration, Vegetables and Fruits Farmers in Kirkbut and Fort Osawa contributed a total of 158,247 Nakfa. Small businesses in the central region contributed a total of 54,000 Nakfa while cooperative associations and small businesses in Gash Barka and southern region contributed 594,471 Nakfa and other individual nationals 8,200 Nakfa. Additionally, the residents of Dekamhare, Sorina, Adi K, Mai Aini, and Adi Kuala subzones have extended material, financial and food items support to disadvantaged families in their areas. The Eritrean National War Disabled Veterans Association branch in Sorina subzone also extended financial, food items, and cleaning materials to its members with a view to ease the burden they might encounter due to the stay-at-home guideline. In related news, a number of nationals inside the country and abroad have decided that the families renting their houses to stay free of charge ranging from one month until the pandemic is fully contained. Furthermore, according to the Eritrean Embassy in the Scandinavian countries, Eritrean nationals in Sweden contributed additional over 75,000 kroner to the effort to combat the spread of coronavirus pandemic. Accordingly, Kedisti Selassie Church in Gothenburg contributed 30,000 kroner, Evangelical Lutheran Church in Stockholm 10,000 kroner, Kadane Meyrat Association in Stockholm 13,400 kroner, Nationals in Norbury 10,900 kroner, and other nationals in three cities in Sweden contributed a total of 10,800 kroner. Similarly, according to the Eritrean Embassy in Israel, Eritrean nationals in Israel contributed additional 173 shekel while the Eritrean community in Israel contributed 200,000 shekels. In related news a number of nationals in Sweden and Israel have decided that the families renting their houses to live free of rental payment ranging from three months to one year. And now for regional, local, and national news. Weekly briefing. You are listening to Yuri Star UK Media Podcast. Voice of Eritrea's fourth month. Call for Water, Soil and Environmental Conservation. Esmara, June 5, 2020 The Ministry of Land, Water and Environment called for reinforced water, soil and environmental conservation. The call was made in connection with 5th of June World Environment Day. The World Environment Day is being observed for the 47th time under the theme Conservation and Development of Biodiversity at a time of coronavirus pandemic that is taking hundreds of thousands of lives throughout the world indicating that the food we drink, the air we breathe, the water we drink and the climate that makes our planet habitable comes from nature, the statement released by the Ministry of Land, Water and Environment pointed out that despite all the benefits that we receive from the planet humans are being observed to mistreat it and that is causing environmental imbalance and degradation of biodiversity, and as a result endangering the lives of human. The Ministry further said that according to the study conducted, 
from the 8 million animal and plant species worldwide and from the so far identified 3,062 in Eritrea, 31% are on the verge of extinction and called for integrated effort for redressing the environment with a view to transfer it to posterity. Furthermore, the residents of administrative areas of Mafid, Maribto, and Kumhul, Foro subzone, are conducting water and soil conservation popular campaigns. The popular campaign that is being conducted in support of the Adi Halo project includes the construction of terraces and water diversion schemes. Indicating that the popular campaign began in 2019 by the residents, Mr. Osman Arafa, administrator of the subzone, said that so far 930 meters of water diversion scheme has been constructed with help of machinery from the Adi Halo project and is expected to cultivate 400 hectares of land. Mr. Osman also said that in robbery a 120 meters of water diversion scheme and two micro dams in Malacoso have been constructed by the Adi Halo project and are significantly contributing in the development of irrigation farming. Mafid, Rebto and Kumhul administrative areas are residents to 1784 families. You're listening to Eerie Star UK Media Podcast. The voice of Eritrea's fourth front.